Do you know section classification affects the load carrying capacity of a section? In this tutorial, I will solve a practical example on section classification as per Eurocode 3. This is part 8 of lecture series on steel design. For other parts, please have a look at link down below in description. Hey friends, if you're new here, I am Dr. Javed Qureshi, a senior lecturer at a London University. On this channel, we explore technical and human skills to help us lead more productive, happy and examined life. Any part of a member which is under compression has to be classified. We classify beams and columns. The members which are under tensile forces or tension members, they don't need to be classified. In this tutorial, I will explain two practical examples on how to classify the sections. The first example is related to a welded I-beam under bending. And the next example is beam under combined action of compression and bending. So let us solve our first example. Now in this example, we have 650 by 25 mm plates. The web plate is 1500 into 10. Steel grade is S275. B, TF and TW, these are given. Now, because this is a built up welded I section, that's the reason that these values are given. Normally, you would be given a section like 457191 into 92, sorry, 457. And you choose this section and then you just go to section table to find out all these values. But here these are given because this is a built up section. What we have to do here is to classify the section. Now it is saying it's a welded I section. It's a beam. Note the wording. It's a beam. It means it's being used as a beam. So we have have to classify it as a beam not column. Now let us see how do we do it. So the first step is to find out Fy which makes sense from table 3.1. Fy is 275 because the steel grade is 275. You just put it into this formula you get value of epsilon as 0.92 which we will need later and then key thing here is to work out this cf so cf is equal to b minus tw minus r divided by 2 b is given tw is given instead of 2r root radius we have weld length we do not have root radius here weld length is substituted as root radius because it's a welded section and then from here i can see this value as cf and then if i divide it by thickness of flange I can get value CF over TF. Once I have got this value then I will compare it with the limiting value. Now this is CF over TF it's outstand flanges. So for table 5.2 we have this outstand flanges and we will check first of all our value is 12.56 so 12.56 is it less than 9 epsilon we will check our value is 12.56 class 1 limit is 9 epsilon 9 times 0.92 now this is going to be different for different steel grades if you're using very high steel grade the value is going to be 0.8 or something and if you're using s235 value is going to be 1 limiting value here is 8.28 is it a class 1 section no it's not class 1 so let's move to the next one then the next limit is 10 epsilon which is 9.2 is it class 2 section no no, then next is value is it's class three, sir. Okay, next is 12.9. Certainly, this value is less than 12.9. Flanges are class three, but our job is not done yet because we have not classified web yet. Then again, I think this is not necessary because we have worked out epsilon already. So this is not necessary unless if we are using two different grades for web and flange, which is not quite normal. You can discard this slide. Then we go to work out CW. So CW is D, that is depth between two flanges minus weld length. Normal formula is H minus 2TF minus 2R. But here we have depth between the flanges given. So we will simply subtract the weld length, two times weld length from here. From here, CW over TW, we, we work out this value. Again, in the same way, we will compare it with, with the limiting values. Now, this is a beam. So internal compression part or web is subjected to bending. It is not subject to compression. So we will use this table. So remember that this is classified as a beam. Our value is from our section properties is 148.8. So we will work out value for the first one. Epsilon remains the same. And this comes out to be 66. Certainly this value is not less than or equal to 66. So we will go to the next one, which is 76 for class two. We'll go to the next one, which is 114. So our value is still not less than this one. So which class is it? So if it does not satisfy any of the condition because our value is even greater than class three limit. So these are 
class three, web is class four. What class? What is overall classification? Four. Four. Oh. Four. So we have to choose the highest one. Choose the least favorable one, which is class four. So after solving first example, let us move now to beam under combined action of bending and compression. This is the example which I want to solve. A member is to be designed to carry a combined bending and axial load. In the presence of a major axis YY bending moment and axial force of 300 kN, show that the cross section classification for 406 times 178 times 54 UKB section in grade S275 steel is flange is class 1 and web is class 4 under pure compression. And flange is class 1 and web is, web is class 2 under combined loading. Note that Pure compression is the worst case scenario for any, but here we are trying the combined loading as well, just to see that if material efficiency and calculation efficiency can be obtained. First, we have to obtain the section properties for this section. Our section is 4061784. We have to get these properties from section table and section table is Again, included in the link down below, or simply if you Google steel for life, you will be able to find the property. So UKB section properties 4061784. So these are the properties H, B, T, W, T, F, R. And you can see that we can obtain the CW over TW and CF over TF directly from section table as well. But here we will use the formula that we learned in the lecture to classify the section. These properties are obtained from section table. Now, firstly, we have to classify the section under most severe loading condition, which is pure compression, to determine whether if we will gain anything by precise calculation when the section is under combined action of moment and compression. Now, where this combined action of moment and compression happens, it happens in two or three cases. One of the case is that if it is a pin jointed structure, if it is a building where joints are pinned and bracing is provided to resist lateral loading, when we have unequal spans, so if one span, for example, of the beam is say five meter, other span on the other side is 10 meters, in that case, it will induce some kind of moment. So a column is subjected to combined action of not only compression, but bending as well. Other could be in case of portal frames where joints are fixed, moment can develop in vertical sections or columns. In that case, a column is subjected to not only axial load, but bending moment as well. Now here we have to see that which is the most severe case, first of all, which is under compression. So first for classifying the section, first thing we want to find out is epsilon. Epsilon is under root 235 over Fy. Steel grade is a given 275. From here, we get value of epsilon as 0.92. The formula for uh, outstand flanges for CF is B minus TW minus 2R over 2. We got these values from the section table B, TW, and 2 times TR. When we divide it, we get this value 74.8. The so CF over TF. Remember that CF is the width of flat portion of flange and TF is thickness of flange. Now from here, we get CF over TF as 6.86. Limiting value for class one in flange is nine Fs. That comes from over here. This is extracts to Eurocode three page two. You can find this extract in the link down below. Here we're classifying the flanges. So I have to go to the next table, outstand flanges. Now limit for class one, when part is subjected to pure compression is CF over TF nine epsilon. Now, first we will check the class one uh, limit and then we will move to the next limit. Now, this limit is nine epsilon and epsilon we worked out little earlier. It, it comes out to be 8.3. Our CF over TF is 6.86, which is less than the limiting value, nine epsilon. This means that the flanges are class one. Then I move to web, which is termed as internal compression part in Euro code. Again, using table 5.2, then we have to find out the limit for, for different classes. So firstly, we have to find out CW. CW is H minus 2TF minus 2R. 
And from here, we get value of flat portion of web and CW over TW value is 46.8. So the part subjected to compression where these are the limiting values. I will try this value CW over TW for class three, which is 42 epsilon. Class three limit is 42 epsilon. And from here, I get 38.8. Now our CW over TW is greater than the limiting value, which is 38.8. It means that this is not class one, this is not class two, not class three. The web is class four. We have to choose the highest class, which is the least favorable situation. So in this case, overall classification will be class four. Now under pure compression, the overall classification is class four. Material efficiency can be gained by using a precise approach, which is classification under combined bending and axial force. Flange classification remains as class one, only it will affect web or internal compression part. Now from table 5.2, for class two cross section, so we will go back again to table 5.2 here. As our flange is class two, so let us try this limit for, for class two. Now here part subjected to bending and, and compression. So we will try this part is not subjected to compression anymore. It is subjected to combined action of bending and compression. So we will try these limits where alpha is equal to this value and it should be less than one. So from table 5.2, as you saw, for class two cross-section classification, when alpha is greater than 0.5, then we use CW limiting value of CW over TW as this one. If it is less than 0.5, then we use this value. So alpha needs to be determined. The formula for alpha is equal to one over CW into bracket H over two plus one over two. Now all these values are given to us. CW, we just found out 360.4. H is the overall depth of the section and ed on the other hand is applied axial load it was in kilo newton we have converted it into newtons by multiplying it with 10 raised 3 and tw is thickness of web which is 7.7 .7. fy is 275 and tf is thickness of flange r is root radius if we put all these values we get value of alpha as 0.7 now you can see alpha is greater than 0.5. It means that we will use this top equation. That is our limit. So limit for class two web is 46 epsilon over 13 alpha minus one. So if you put all these values, alpha we worked out a little earlier, we get 51.8. Our CW over TW was 46.8. Let us see if this is within the limit or not. Now our CW over TW 46.8, that is less than 51. 1.8, which is the limiting value for class two, when the section is under combined action of bending and compression. Now, when web or internal compression part is class two, when flanges are class two, then what will be overall classification? It will be class two. We can say that overall classification is class two under combined action of bending and compression.